All right, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the inverse function in slope intercept form. Right here, we have our original function, f of x equals negative one third x plus seven, and I need the inverse of it, okay? So we're going to invert the function. All that means is this. If I put a value in for x and work it out and get an output, for example, f of three in this case, if I put a three right there, multiply it by negative one third and add seven, the output comes out to six. I'll show you why real quick, just in case you're wondering. Negative one-third times x. Remember, our x here is a 3 in this case, plus 7. Negative one-third times 3 is negative 1, plus 7 gives me 6, my output. So, now that we know plugging 3 in for x produces an output of 6, our inverse function would flip-flop our x and our y's, okay? Meaning if we were to put in a 6, it would produce a 3. That's what we're trying to do when we're inversing, or inverting, excuse me, a function. Okay, so to find the inverse of this function, because we're trying to flip the x and the y, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna take f of x and we're gonna just turn that into a y because y is so much easier to work with when we're dealing with algebra. y equals negative one-third x plus seven, but remember we're trying to flip our x and our y, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're literally just gonna change those. So I'm gonna erase my y and turn it into an x, and I'm gonna erase my x and turn it into a y. Now once I've done this, we're trying to get y by itself. We're trying to solve for y. So I need to remove the seven, and the negative one-third as a coefficient of the variable. Inverse operation of adding seven and subtracting seven, that's going to eliminate it. Take away seven on the other side. Remember, we want to separate the left and right side of our equations. We now have x minus seven on the left side, and it's equal to one, negative one-third y on the right. So all I've done is I changed f of x into a y, and then I flipped them. Now I'm starting to solve for y. y is equal to, how am I going to get rid of this negative one-third that's attached to y? We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is negative three over one, or just negative three. I'd put it like this. Now, I know by doing that, I'm going to eliminate those two right there like that, but I also need to do it over here on the other side, multiply by three. It's a good thing back in eighth grade you were taught the distributive property because now you know that negative three times x is negative three x, negative three times negative seven is positive 21, and that is equal to y. I now have an equation where I believe I will get inverse values by plugging them in. Remember back at the start when I put a three in for x, it produced a six. Now if I put a 6 in for x, it should produce a 3. Let's find out if that works. Let's put a 6 in for x. What's negative 3 times 6? Negative 18 plus 21 equals y. Negative 18 plus 21 is 3. It's equal to y. So when I put a 6 in, it produced a 3. Remember back the original, when I put a 3 in, it produced a 6. And that's how inverse functions really work. Okay, so break it all down one more time. What did we do? We took the function. We said f of x looks better as a y. We changed it to a y. And then we flipped these. Notice they're flipped right there. Once we got them flipped, we move everything away from y. So y is by itself. Now you have a slope-intercept form equation. This here is your inverse. This was me checking to make sure that it worked. So if you're going to give the answer, find the inverse function in slope-intercept form of this, your answer would be y equals negative 3x plus 21. 21. Study hard, and good luck on your upcoming test.